So there's been some pretty big news in the world of AI. Let's take a look at the biggest news stories that just happened. Subscribe for more sweet AI content. First and foremost, we finally have some clarity into what's been happening in the realm of the rumors around OpenAI slash Sam Altman developing their very own AI chip. This is something that's been in and out of the news for quite a while, starting with rumors of a neuromorphic chip from a company called Rain, located in San Francisco, not too far from the OpenAI offices. But over time has shifted to include potentially some sort of Saudi Arabian money, the U.S. government stepping in to block some of the deals, and tons, tons more things happening. But now, OpenAI has talked to Broadcom about developing a new AI chip. So Broadcom is an American developer, designer, manufacturer, and global supplier of, amongst other things, of semiconductors. So broad strokes, think of it as somewhat similar to NVIDIA, at least in the same space. Their annual revenue for last year was $35 billion. Looks like NVIDIA's revenue last year was um, just under $27 billion. So according to this article in the information, you're saying Sam Altman had a plan to produce chip factories and data centers to house them. His plan has taken numerous twists and turns since then. You're not kidding about that. Some of the weirdest stories that we've covered over the last year were in relation to this uh, chip that Sam was trying to produce. So ChatGPT and OpenAI, they've been hiring members of Google's unit that produces Google's AI chips, the TPU, the Tensor Processing Unit. By the way, Jonathan Ross, CEO and founder of Grok with a Q, that super fast AI inference chip, he was involved in that production as well. The Google's uh, TPU chip, he was somehow involved in that as well. And of course, he went on to create his own chip, the Grok chip, currently one of the fastest or probably actually the fastest inference chip that we have for AI. There's been rumors that other companies are trying to create faster chips, but I'm not sure if we've seen any that have actually shipped anything. And now OpenAI is talking to people, including Broadcom, about working on the chip. And of course, creating something like this would rival NVIDIA. That's kind of NVIDIA's bread and butter, something that it's been incredibly good at. There's a lot of people that are gunning after that sweet space of selling these chips that are in extreme demand right now. As they're saying here, NVIDIA has been generating unprecedented profit margins and sales on its AI-focused GPUs, graphing processing units. You've probably seen this chart. This is all the various big tech companies, including Microsoft, Meta, Google, Tencent, as well as Baidu, Alibaba, TikTok, Tesla, etc. How many of the NVIDIA's H100 chips they have either purchased or already have? Places like Meta has been investing something like tens of billions into this, into buying chips, and have been even before the start of the AI wave. As they were getting ready for the Meta Universe, they were already buying up some of those chips, so they're kind of ahead of the curve on this one. So according to this article, and again, this is the information a link down below, this is a subscription-based publication, meaning that you have to pay to access the content. But this is one sort of newspaper publication that I'm happily paying for every month, and I don't think I ever will cancel my subscription as long as they keep doing what they're doing. I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm just saying they seem to really know their stuff when it comes to AI and what's happening in this world. And here they're saying that Sam Altman spoke to Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co. So that's TSMC. You might have heard about this one. It kind of exemplifies that 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. Taiwan, of course, produces most of the world's semiconductor chips, specifically the advanced chips that are required for AI training and AI inference. They're the global leader in producing those. And of course, out of the largest semiconductor companies in the world, even if you look at just Taiwan, right, the TSMC, that's the company that Sam Altman was talking to. It's the largest producer. So this is a chart for 2022, their revenue in billions. As you see here, TSMC is number one. We have Intel number three, Qualcomm. And here's Broadcom at a little bit less than half of TSMC. Now you'll notice NVIDIA is on here, but TSMC produces a lot of the chips for everybody. So here's the percentage share of TSMC's largest customers. So here's who's buying from TSMC. Basically the point is TSMC doesn't have their own chips. They don't kind of compete with their customers. They just do design manufacturing for them, which makes them very attractive for a lot of these companies because they don't want their designs, their intellectual property to be just copied and replicated. So TSMC is careful not to compete with them, but it's selling to Apple, AWS, Qualcomm, AMD, Broadcom, NVIDIA, Intel, etc. And so the conversations with Sam Altman was confirmed by a senior TSMC manager. Altman also talked to the Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger. The TSMC CEO said, Altman, it was too aggressive for me to believe. Interesting. 
meaning that his vision for how to quickly scale up chip production was probably too ambitious, too aggressive. But TSMC is open to producing more if people would commit to purchasing a substantial amount of them. They're willing to expand if there's capital behind it. And so how realistic is this? Well, Altman has been forging relationships with a lot of big people, big financiers in the world, including SoftBank, UAE-based sovereign wealth funds, and large private equity firms. Looks like OpenAI did not start designing the chips, and at the very earliest, they wouldn't be produced until 2026. CEO of NVIDIA Jensen has, of course, been in OpenAI offices, as well as meeting with Elon Musk, providing the chips, sometimes personally signing them. So it will be interesting to see how this plays out. Can this new potential chip that they're making be a threat to NVIDIA? Keep in mind that Sam Altman and Microsoft, they do have a lot of really big projects in the works, including Stargate, which is a future data center that could cost up to $100 billion. They're also talking about building a power plant somewhere near Seattle. That project is called Helion, and it announces world's first fusion energy purchase agreement with Microsoft in Everett, Washington. So this is the first sort of commercially viable fusion power facility. So if this is to be believed, or if this is really happening, if we can assume this will happen, if this really comes to fruition, all these Sam Altman-backed projects work out, there's going to be a new AI chip, a massive $100 billion data center, a fusion power plant, powering all of this with inexpensive clean energy, as well as whatever OpenAI is cooking up, whether that's AGI or whatever else they're bringing into the world. I mean, if anybody else was doing it, I would probably bet against them. Having all those things, you know, completed, come to fruition and uh, working within the next, let's say, five to 10 years, that would seem like a long shot. With Sam Altman, I don't know, he might just pull it off. We'll see. He somehow keeps surprising people to the upside. But speaking of crazy Sam Altman projects that are becoming real, here is figure 02. So this is Brett Adcock. He's behind the figure robot. We've seen that robot talking, using ChatGPT to understand commands, to respond to questions, to, you know, I believe someone said, oh, I'm, I'm hungry, what should I eat? And the robot picks up an apple and hands it to them. So this has OpenAI technology integrated in it. And there's a partnership between OpenAI and Figure. And now they're saying that their Figure 02 is coming August 6th. And this company has already a commercial agreement with BMW Manufacturing. And the idea is to bring general purpose humanoid robots to various production facilities for BMW for their car manufacturing. But stay tuned, August 6th, we should see some more announcements about the brand new robot, probably even more hooked up with OpenAI technology. So again, yet another thing that Microsoft and OpenAI have invested into. This is de facto the OpenAI robot. That's the robot that's backed by that company. In somewhat unrelated news, have you ever wished you could talk to your dog or at least understand what he's thinking? So many of various kids' movies seem to revolve around various talking animals. Is it crazy to think that AI could help us communicate with dogs, for example? Well, an ex-OpenAI engineer, surprise, surprise, thinks that it can. Trainee, a Palo Alto, California-based AI startup, will help customers train and communicate with their dogs. And apparently, people are pouring money into this. They've trained a model based on more than 100,000 dogs that's able to identify, at this point, 10 different emotional states of a dog. So you can tell if it's crying for food or crying for attention. And customers are going to be able to use an app to take pictures of their dogs and have the AI model analyze the dog's emotional state and also help potty train dogs or help them follow other instructions. A few videos ago, we talked about the huge new opportunity, the software 3.0. Basically, the idea is where we take an open source model, an advanced model like Llama 3.1, we fine tune it for our own needs, whatever that may be. Since it's open source and Meta has given us the permission to create whatever we wanted with that technology, you know, within limits, I assume, but this is going to be a very powerful and rapidly growing segment. As I've said, I think it's going to be absolutely massive. If you were looking for a business opportunity of a lifetime, this is it. I'll link the video in the description in case you want to see that again. The reason I say that is here's proof, or at least supporting evidence. I did not know about this company when I was recording the previous videos, but this AI model for dogs, Trainee, it used Llama, 
the open weight, open source, open code model to develop the app, which now has 200,000 registered users. It's a freemium app, meaning that it's free, but you're able to buy you know, various customized applications, programming interfaces, et cetera. And they're saying something very similar to what Jensen of NVIDIA has been saying. You know, saying dog's language is also a natural language. The point here is that AI, as long as you can feed it data, can learn to make various predictions, very various intelligent guesses about the outputs and the things that you put in, the tokens you put in. Yeah, it could be pixels and images. It could be words like ChatGPT. It could be video. But we've also seen some other use cases. We've seen AlphaFold and the folding of proteins. We've seen weather prediction engines, physics simulation engines, etc. It's all data in, data out. So as they say, why can't woof woof would be a language right if human language can be word to vector why can't woof woof certainly i would believe that developing an ai model that is able to predict the dog's different emotional states kind of give you insights in what they're thinking or doing not only one would be incredibly useful especially if you're a brand new dog owner without a lot of uh, experience a little insight into the brain of your puppy would be very useful number two i think it would be very very effective Having everybody kind of contribute their data to the model would also help create a better model for everyone to use. I got to say, I'm quite excited to see where this goes. I have high hopes for this one. And final piece of news, is this a robot dentist or a highly, highly advanced torture device? The answer is A, robot dentist. But can you imagine if somebody would hack this thing with nefarious intent? I, I, I'm kind of scared. That is the stuff of nightmares. Fully automatic robot dentist performs the world's first human procedure. They start the article by saying nightmare fuel. Yeah, they're talking my language, but this robot uses a handheld 3D volumetric scanner, which builds a detailed 3D model of the mouth, including teeth, gums, nerves, etc. It uses light beams and has a very high resolution, with cavities automatically detected at an accuracy rate around 90%. So you, the human, talk to the human dentist and decide what needs to be doing, but once those decisions are made, the robot takes over and just goes for it. I don't think I've ever given trigger warnings on this channel, but I think this is going to be a first. I will click on this play button. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not taking any responsibilities, but here's where the AI robot prepares a tooth or a dental crown. Now, this is normally a two-hour procedure that dentists normally split into two visits. This robot gets it done in 50 minutes. So here's kind of a fast forwarded version of that. I think that blue thing, it looks like a human glove, maybe just wiping away some of the liquid or whatever. But the procedure is done by the robot that goes in there and whatever that's called, it strips the bone, the tooth from around the tooth prepared for the crown. And I gotta say, I mean, I don't know, the idea that it might be so much faster, right? Instead of two hours or two days, right? You get it done in 15 minutes and don't have to worry about it. I would be pretty tempted to do it, especially if it's at least as good as a human doctor, as a human dentist. I would be tempted to try this. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you would allow this thing to operate autonomously on your face. I honestly can't say. I don't know if this is okay or not. For me, definitely not on the, you know, version 1.0, but maybe once a few years has passed and thousands of patients have survived the procedure. Yeah, this seems like it could really simplify and make it a lot easier to do various dental work. With that said, my name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.